This is Larry the Barberman, and today I'm in California in Santa Ana with none other than Pope the Barber. Pope the Barber is a self-styled barbering maverick. This is an interview that I've wanted for a very, very, very long time. This could make Larry the Barberman's interview series complete. Oh, <laughs> that's so, awesome. Thank you for inviting me to the Vatican. I Thank have you. to A, salute you on the name because, you know, having the name Pope the Barber and then having a barber shop called the Vatican for me is just, it's, it's genius. Did I, blow you, did I blow you away on that one? <laughs> I was blown away. <laughs> and not only that, I think, you know, here at the Vatican, you kind of see the images on Instagram and you think it's a little barber shop, but you've brought me up. And yeah. upstairs, it's a free-level barber shop. It's almost like a TARDIS from Doctor Who. Yeah, it's it's an awesome space. But that's what I that's what I want to do. I don't want to make it, you know, look cooler on Instagram. I want I want it to look, you know, cool. And I want I want to lure people in. I want you have to you have to see this place to believe it. I guess you know. And what's remarkable is as, as vast as it is and as big as this shop is, I'm, you know, coming from London, I've come in this shop and I'm like, what on earth are you doing with all this space? And you've told me that you're moving into a bigger shop, which is really impressive because as I understand, you've only had, you've had this shop less than a year. Is that right? Um, I've, I've had this space for two years and we've been up and running for about a year and a half. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just... I have a vision of what I wanted to do and you know everything happens for a reason that that spot just popped up and I, I was just like I, I need to take that you know I'm just I'm all about vibes and I love this place you know it's been dear but it's time for another expansion one um, it's twice as big and I mean you'll see it's just an amazing spot I love it so watch this the space to come yes. if you like yes Okay, so to my understanding, your entry into barbering was whilst you was at high school, you played basketball yeah. and you toured with the male basketball players and then maybe you can tell me in your own words how you started barbering yeah. from this Did expert. I tell you that? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I played basketball. Um, I switched schools every single year, so I was on the team every single year, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, we cut. I mean, we traveled with the men's team, and you know, all my friends would be cutting their own hair, and uh, it looked fun to me, you know. So I got good at it. Um, I went to a predominantly black school, you know, so uh, I was like the white girl that could cut. But I mean, I'm not even white, but. Um, I don't know, it was fun. It was really fun. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be a career for me. Um, I played basketball, I had a scholarship. I was gonna um, go play basketball, but um, I got into a car accident and um, you know how that goes. But I mean, it was, it was all meant to happen, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I, from that accident, I actually couldn't walk for about a year, and uh, I decided, you know, it was kind of a good time. I was going to school for aeronautical engineering, and, um, wow. yeah, and <laughs> I always, I mean, I loved doing hair, you know, obviously I had a passion for it, but I thought it was more of a hobby, and especially because, you know, my life was going this way, I, you know, I never thought that barbering was uh, really a thing for me. I actually started out as a hairstylist, so but I'll get back to that. Um, yeah, I went to cosmetology school uh, in crutches, and I mean, it was the scariest thing telling my parents, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> you know, I, I would love to cut hair, it, it, it would be, it would just be so awesome. And I've heard my that mom story was, so many times, the right? kind of brainy kid that's drawn towards barbering and the parents don't get it and they rebel against it and then the, the kid excels in barbering and becomes world yeah. renowned and then the parents adopt it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I hear it all the time, but you know what, that's, that's what gives everybody that drive, you know, that's, that's the first person who says no, you know, that's, that's that first person and um, 
you know, the uh, nature of the rebellious barber stylist, you know, that's, that's the first triumph, you know, that's the, that's the, that payoff, right? Leah, I'm using your face as a, <laughs> uh, as a role, Matt, I'm sorry. Rolling table. Uh-huh. So clearly you've got a knack for the whole, uh, you've got a knack for every part of barbering, building a business. You've obviously got a successful barber shop here because you're growing from strength to strength. Yeah. Uh, you built a brand for yourself before social media. Tell me how you actually built a name for yourself and how Pope the Barber came around as a brand. You know, it's, it's funny how, it, you know, uh, like I said, everything happens for a reason, you know, right place, right time. Um, I've always just been a people person, you know, and networking is just kind of my jam. It all started, I mean, I've been a barber straight out of high school, obviously, you know, that's all I really know, but um, I always wanted to do something on the side, you know, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't because I was bored of hair. It was just, you know, it, there was no job title that really fit what I wanted. You know, I wanted to travel, I wanted to do this and that, and um, I wanted to do everything really. And that's what a brand is. You know, you can, you can have everything you like, do whatever the hell you want. And I mean, that's, that's your brand pretty much, you know? So that's what right. I did, what's that? As long as it's consistent with you. Yeah, as long, I mean, as long as it's consistent and, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking 10 steps ahead for sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, how it really started is, um, you know, like I said, I was barbering, but I was also hosting clubs and doing tattoo modeling and all that. And um, I tried to kind of marry the two and I started to get pretty popular in nightlife and I, I wanted people to know me for barbering, you know, so um, I actually took a job opportunity in Montreal and um, I went out there and just focused on my brand. I heard it was negative 40 over there and I was like, perfect, I don't need to go outside. <laughs> Seriously, it was like that. I was just, I knew what I wanted, um, you know, um, that whole thing came about because, you know, we did this faux tour you know little did everybody know on our tour we ended up coming home broke you know but people saw that you know that i traveled um so they wanted to hire me for traveling which was cool and um yeah i don't know i just i, I built that from there and and i learned along the way i've had a couple um mentors along the way not in barbering and business so you know i just kind of married everything that i'm into you know for from tattoos to the nightlife to you know to now having a barber shop I think I've worked in so many damn barber shops and I've guest barbered I've met you know everyone there is to to meet pretty much and I knew what my everyday life you know what I wanted it to be you know I wanted a good team good vibes and just to be able to you know do whatever the hell I want <laughs> pretty much you know. So what did you take away from Notorious? Because Notorious, I mean, I first saw you and Famous and Chink when I first came into Barbering, which was four years ago. Yeah. And Notorious looked something special. It was like it was a it movement. It was special. It, it it's made a... all of you. So, I mean, tell me a little bit about that and what you took away from it. I mean, I learned so much being there, you know, and being around people... Um, you know, like Famos and Chink and um, Thad. and Thad, yeah, oh yeah, Thad <laughs> and um, the Maison Privé boys, um, Oliver Colt and um, Barbara Streisand, my homie Leo. You know, they're all. We all broke away from that place. We all learned what we needed to learn, um, and we all opened shops. You know, we all knew what we wanted to do. We wanted a home base and we wanted to travel. And um, there was a lot to learn there. You know, our boss, he was cool. And, um, you know, for the time being. And he taught us a lot. Um, we, learned, we learned more from each other, though. You know, we bounced ideas off of each other. And 
um, just push each other to grow pretty much. We're all doing merch at the same time. You know, Famous would come out with a hat and I'm like, I need to do a beanie, you know, pins and all this merch and stuff. It's cool because Montreal, um, it's super tight knit and people don't know how talented they are. You know, they kind of, um, they're too humble about how talented they are, but it's easy to round up a group of people and just, you know, cheer each other on and help each other out. So we had a full, um, like, video team. We had people make, you know, that made clothes on lock. Just everything was super tight knit, you know. So um, we we're making clothes up there, hand sewn and um, our pins and everything, you know. So I wanted to translate out that out to here you know everything that's all tight-knit and um, just people bettering each other out there you know LA is like a type of spot where there are just haters everywhere dog, you know and I, I'm not one of those people and I don't want to be around those people so uh, I wanted to come here with a clean slate and build my own team of everyone you know videographers clothes like you know fashion hair everything like that so um, I took a lot from there I learned everything I met my fiance there I I loved it, you know. Okay, so you're talking a lot about teams. Obviously, there was different skill sets within Notorious. Yeah. <clears throat> what would you say your speciality is in barbering? What's your strong area? Um, I mean, I, I, I love it all. You know, I'd like to say I'm good at one thing, but I mean, I just love cutting hair, you know? I love it, and I can't say I'm the best. I'm not the best. Um, I do have a lot of things that I enjoy doing, and I love learning new things. Um, I mean, are you talking about like what kind of cut I'm yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah, what kind of haircut style. I mean, some people are fade specialists, some people are pattern specialists. I love a good, um, like, gentleman's cut with a nice, clean taper. I love that, you know? So um, you're a classic girl. I'm a, I, 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 that, that's kind of my favorite. I mean, and then you can, you know, like, fast forward. I love doing flat tops and, you know, anything crazy. I love doing designs and stuff, but... Your I don't know. I guess I'm not, I'm not known for really anything, but I, I can do it all, you know? I... Uh, yeah, I guess that would be my favorite for sure. Is a nice, like, uh, clean, slick back, or not slick back, just kind of like a feathered pompadour with like a, a nice clean taper, something funky in the back, you know? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. All right, so I want to get a little bit personal now, not too personal. All right. Your body is covered in tattoos by all accounts. Yeah. Where did your first tattoo start and what led you to keep going on? I'm so glad you asked, actually. <laughs> um, my first tattoo, I always knew I wanted tattoos, but I had to slide in somehow with my parents, you know? So my first tattoo was on my side. My whole side's all blasted up with, um, it says, all that I am, I owe to my mother, which is, you know, Oh, so you went big right from the get-go. Oh, yeah. I went big, <laughs> and I went for my mom because, I mean, it, it worked, you know. I went up to her, I'm like, oh, you know, I have a tattoo. I got one, and, you know, I told her what it says, and she was mad, and then she was like, oh. And then, you know, I saw her bragging to all of her friends, look at her first tattoo, and then she slapped me, and then, you know, secretly she's, she was proud. Um, but the rest of my tattoos actually... Um, you know, I'm Cambodian and I'm Buddhist and um, the way my family works actually and uh, a lot of my friends, um, our tattoos are to ward off demons or, you know, so they're scary. All of my tattoos are demons and um, like I have a fake god here and, um, you know, just all kind of spiritual um, not healing, but kind of protection and all that. Um, they're all um, either Hindi, which was previously um, Buddhist, um, the deities and all that. Um, but I'm head to toe, you know. So you started with the writing and then you, the pattern came off of the writing? Because like I said, there's a lot. Of, it's the only thing, yeah, it's the only thing that's 
just its own little entity, you know. The rest, I, you know, I started uh, with my sleeve. I was 16, I started with a sleeve, it was horrible. Uh, I had it covered up when I was like 18. Um, and then my tattoo artist would have bad dreams about this because I was black and white and my whole arm was almost black. And then we went through with color and just, you know, pushed out all this black and then started to go up. But, you know, um, each piece is special to me. I love all my pieces, but um, I liked every look that came with it. I did this and then I had the neck and then I went two sleeves and, and all the way down. Um, okay, so yeah. for me, you've got a very pretty and delicate face and you've got this hard saw coming down yeah. your cheek, the side of your temple I do. For, the, for the camera. Yeah, Was there any deliberation in that particular tattoo because that's a life-changing tattoo or again did you just go in bold and this is what I want and I'm doing it no regret yeah I did actually I went in like that I was like I'm no deliberation whatsoever um for a moment but I knew what I wanted I was just praying to God that it looked good you know um it was just kind of a piece where Actually, you know, it's funny, like every visible piece that you can't hide, my tattoo artist and I would like take a moment of silence and dedicate my life to the arts, you know? But this was like the ultimate, like, this was it for me, you know? My face had to, you can't hide that, you know? It's a bold piece, it's, it's a statement, and it was just a time in my life where I just needed a, you know, what, what the tattoo is for, just put a dagger in and get on with it already you know and i can see you're extremely bold with it because you've got your own unique hairstyle which is you know it's like a fade on one side and yeah. you've got all the weight on the other but miss hayden cassidy <laughs> miss leah she did this it was cool it was dope i loved it um yeah i've had my hair like this for like 12 years Okay, I I've, I went through all the crazy hairstyles and hair school and um, and then I had this crazy like anime fashion mullet thing going on and I was like oh my gosh this is way too much for me so I grew both my sides out and then I was bored and then I just decided like this is it <laughs> this is my jam so I I've had it shaved ever since Again. I don't think I'll ever change yeah. I like it just like stop contrast of yeah feeling light on one side and heavy on the other. Yeah, no, I'm good. I probably have some neck problems because of it, but I hope I go gray with it. I think I just dropped my blunt. Oh no, I got it. You got it. Okay, I'm just- No, every female has. Everybody, every female has been passed up in a barber shop, you know, for whoever's next to them. Um, but, you know, it, honestly, I've never really given, am I allowed to cuss? You can, you want okay, to. great, because I've never given a fuck, really, honestly. Um, you know, for as many times as, you know, anything like that's happened to me, it's just, it, it's never really phased me. I've just wanted to push harder and, I don't know, I don't, I don't really see it. You know, as much as people want to discriminate or whatever, I, I grew up against every social norm, you know, so nothing's new to me. Being a female wasn't, wasn't the hard part of my life, really, you know. But uh, I definitely noticed I was, you know, the only female in a barbershop, you know. I noticed, um, I don't know, I mean, now's the time for, for women, though. You know, now's the time where, um, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm for it. I'm for the movement, you know, and for anybody that has had any struggles or whatever, I'm here. That's, that's a role I want to play in this, you know. Can I'm you define you. how you deal with it? So if there was another female out there that's, you know, maybe at breaking point and wanting to run away, how would you define how you deal with that? And someone might be able to feed or draw off of your way of dealing with that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to tell somebody, ah, just forget what they say, you know, because in the end it's, you know, your feelings are hurt or, you know, it's, it's not, you know, if you're really being mistreated, you know, if you're really being, you know, treated less than you are, 
then you know you need to get out of there wherever you're at you need to leave you know that's you don't you don't that's the most important thing i've learned in this lifetime is you're not stuck anywhere you are you know that's my first you know something to anybody is you're, you're not stuck so if you're really being mistreated you need to get out um, if it's something that you need to talk about you know you, you most of the time people aren't talking so you need to give people a piece of your mind you know um, it's it's just hard you know I just I wish people could just be you know just say fuck it like me sometimes but you can't you know so for them I, I I've had plenty of people say that they've been mistreated and all that and um, yeah, I, I've been through it too. I tell them my stories and, and things that have happened to me and other females. And um, I just, I would, I like to set an example more so. There's not a lot I can tell you, you know, I can definitely sort of help you along and just tell you how not important it is to your life. But, uh, you know, most of my barbershop is female, you know, that's, we're killing it right now, uh, you know, it's, it's our time, so if I'm going to tell anybody anything, it's fuck it, move forward, do it. Start your own movement. Start your own movement, okay. you know. And that's quite interesting that you just said that, that you're kind of primarily the face of the shop downstairs when people walk past, they only see women. So that's, yeah. you know. Yes. And then I guess in a way, there's so many customers you just draw the people that you'd want to draw and they would have nothing to say when they come in here, whether man or woman. Is that, that fair? I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, that is, it is what it is. My whole, you know, as soon as you walk into my shop, three females just greeting you, saying hi. Um, all heavy hitters in the shop, they're awesome. Uh, we definitely set the vibe, but we've also attracted women into the barber shop. Um, that have been discriminated against as a customer. Those are the people that I need in here. Oh, you know? So this could almost be like boot camp. You've yeah. been abused, come in there and I'm, I'm gonna condition you. <laughs> yeah, so don't right? Take on any of those. Yeah. Beep, or, beep, 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 beeps. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> all the beeps, right? But uh, it's more so, it's a, it's a safe haven here. It's, it's a place of equality, good vibes and, and all that. You know, no, so, so. Um, if you could feel that anywhere else, go ahead. But, you know, like I said, just come feel the vibe. Okay, so we was talking earlier on, we just kind of touched on products. What products, you know, you said when you was in Montreal, you got into this habit of making your own products and marketing. Yeah. What products do you have readily available now for your many followers or fans or customers or people that buy into your self-styled madness. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of, I, I have a few things out there, but this year is the year of launching, you know, so I have, um, I have clothes, I have all handmade clothes um, coming out. Um, my biggest thing is I have a hair product coming out that I won't tell you too much about. But um, that's one of my biggest projects uh, this year, um, besides all of, you know. Wet product, electronic product, what kind of product? A hair product. A lovely hair product. You yeah. seem very coy. Yeah. Okay, so what, yeah. what is available? What are you open? Open. Uh, what is readily available? Readily right available? I got hats. You want hats? Go get hats. It's fine. I got some cool hats. You know, is this a Pope hat? No, that's a, it's a monster. No, this is a monster hat. Yeah. Okay. I got to wear something monster every time I do something. Or every day of my life, actually. But, um, yeah. No products yet. I have a couple things, you know, uh, that are available, but all the good stuff coming out. So, um, Within the next few months, actually, you can, you'll be able to buy some, some cool stuff out of me. Okay. Yeah. So another product that you offer is education. Yes. Tell me your area of speciality in education and what it is you want to leave with your subjects or your students after they come to visit you or see you at a show. 
Well, um, my style of education is, you know, goes back to my roots. I started as a cosmetologist um, and stylist. And then I moved into, I always, I've always done men's hair, but I moved into barbering, just strictly barbering a few years later. And, um, you know, I realized there's a huge gap between stylist and barber. Um, you know, there was when I first started teaching. There's still, you know, a huge gap. Um, so I'm pretty one-on-one, um, depending on, you know, what your level of expertise is. But uh, it is basically bridging the gap between stylist and barber. Um, you know, uh, more clipper techniques, and for the barbers that I teach, more scissor techniques. Um, so basically, just bridging that gap. Um, oh, so it's, yeah, the crossover. Yeah, the crossover. Because you've done uh, cosmetology, you can kind of understand their fears or certain challenges yes. that they have trouble overcoming. Um, definitely. Yeah, I definitely know all the, the troubles that they have. I also know all the tools um, that they are and aren't familiar with. You know, so introducing tools and how to use them and um, yeah, just really educating. But mostly, I mean, mostly it's to talk to these people, you know, as much as, you know, yeah, that's my style you know, of teaching, but um, I, I teach to light a fire under people's asses, you know, I... So you're more of a mind, as much as you've got the actual technical uh, skills to help them, you're kind of a mindset kind of... Yeah, girl. yes, I, I would say, honestly, I, I love teaching, I like the technical work, but, um, you know, in the end, it's, I want people to leave feeling inspired, whether it's you know, taking a piece of, you know, the way that I cut and implementing it into their way of cutting, or it's just kind of taking my story, you know, I've been poor, homeless, wealthy, poor again, wealthy, you know, all from making big leaps, big jumps, which is, you know, a lot of failures and a lot of success, you know, so, um, it, you know, barbers and stylists have this, you know, the stigma of, you know, and, and a lot of stylists give themselves that, or stylists and barbers kind of give themselves that, or, you know, I didn't go to school, this is what, this is all I do, and no, it's not, you know, there's so much to it, and um, I don't care what stage of life you are, or if you're living in your car trying to get your Cosmo or barbering license, you know, I have... I have a way out for you, you know, and that's just, I always leave somewhere, you know, with somebody saying thank you, you know, I really, really needed this or, um, you know, follow up stories and it's just mostly, you know, it's, it's all what you make it. This life is all just what you make. Yeah, you can cut hair. If, if that's your jam, if you want to sit behind a chair all day, tight, you know, do that. Um, I want more. So uh, naturally, I like to teach people what I know, because if I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it, really. Um, yeah. So it sounds like you, you practice law of attraction. What parts of law of attraction do you practice for yourself? What do you mean? So some people practice the uh, law of attraction by meditation, some people do affirmations, some people write out their goals, some people are just daydreamers. I don't know. What, how do you consciously make your mind better to achieve the goals that you want to achieve? Oh, I was born like that, man. I was born, I was born thinking about, I mean, I've always just had huge, dreams, you know, big dreams, and I know each step I need to take to achieve those things, you know, so um, in terms of the law of attraction and all of that, I, I'm good at reading people, you know, I'm good with people, I've always been like a natural networker, 
Um, and for myself to stay, you know, keep my mind right, I definitely need my, my rest and uh, go to the gym, try to eat right, um, be, live it, you know, live that example. I, I can't tell somebody something and I'm not living that life, you know. I, I, if somebody's going to come to me for, for answers or inspiration or anything, I, I want to make sure I, I have that for you, you know. So just continuously bettering myself, um, I, I'll, I'll give you anything I have, pretty much. You know, I'm, I'm just that type of person, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I was born like that, you okay. know. A goal-seeking missile that's not deterred and stays in her lane no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need you to follow me around everywhere and kind of decode the things I try to say. <laughs> you really rock at that. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so talking about that, you know, this can go to, this interview is going to go out to people all over the world. Where can people expect to see you in the forthcoming year if they wanted to kind of reach out and touch you other than coming to the Vatican? What kind of shows have you got in the pipeline? Um, oh crap, I was, uh, I totally forgot about that. Um, I have Connecticut Barber Expo. Um, I'm doing something cool in June in Miami. I can't, that's top secret. Um, I'm going to be in Canada. Um, working with Monster, and um, I don't know. I I might be in Europe this summer. Yes, I, I just talked to, yes, we need to Hayden. Hell yeah, we might be doing something cool in Europe. Okay, so you've got June's a secret in Miami. March, end of March is CT Barber Expo. Yes, I think I think that's when that's at. Everything else I'm doing, I'm, I'm traveling once or twice a month and it's all going to be in the States, you know. So I'm going to be in Utah, Boise, New York, Texas, Chicago, everywhere, everywhere here. So not too much international, but hopefully I get, you know, hopefully we do the Europe thing. That'd be cool. I've never been there before, ever. You need to come. Yeah. And do you do any internal workshops within the barbershop because um, can people come to do you do like on a Sunday you might say I'm doing a master class on X Y or Z um, I will be right now I'm doing um, education days because I'm training my team actually to educate um, so I'm teaching the teachers right now and then uh, yeah I, especially when we move into our new spot uh, it's huge, and um, it'll be perfect for teaching and all that. So soon, yes, within the next couple months, we'll probably be doing Vatican um, education. So you're going to go around as a team? Yeah. All right, you've gone all coy on me again. Um, this is to do with the product? Yes. All right, okay. It does. I'll say no more. I'll okay. go no further. Say, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's all it's all a ma part of my little master plan I've got going. But yes, a lot of education, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of traveling this year, next year, all years. Okay. Yeah. So Pope, your parting words to I'm not even going to say female barber, a barber out there that wanted to excel in the craft of barbering and move forward and. What would be your words of advice to help them to get to the next level? Hone your skills, you know, really work on your product because in the end you are a product and, you know, for barbers what you have if you don't actually have a product is your skill, you know, so make sure you got that skill, go, you know, take classes, um, never stop educating yourself and never stop being open to being, well, for that education, for sure, for sure. Don't stop learning because that's what, you know, that's what kills a barber or a stylist is just stopping what they do, you know. Um, network, 
Networking is super important. If you want to do something like social media is out there, it's all out there. That's how I got to travel and all that from Instagram, um, you know, Facebook, all that. Just putting yourself out there, reaching out to people, um, and dream big. Everything is possible. Dream big. Um, I'm doing I'm doing workshops as well on how to build a barbershop. You know, so. Um, You've got to do the branding one as well, because for me, your branding is, you know, yeah. a different level. Yes, brand yourself. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the base of it. Yes, brand, brand yourself. Um, take everything you like and, you know, smash it into one thing, and that is your brand. Sell yourself right. Make sure you have a good product. Um, meet new people. Do new things. See new places. And open your mind. That's what it is, right? It is indeed. Yeah. Pope de Barber, thank you ever so much for inviting me to the Vatican, giving me a big tick off of my bucket list. Having this interview has been fantastic. I thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck and have a fantastic day on your wedding day and just keep doing what you're doing. You're obviously doing something right. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Larry the Barber Man. <laughs>